you're watching Gears. Brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. All across America. In thousands of garages, carports, and backyards. There sits a project that has become hindered. Stalled or halted by the lack of time, money, or expertise by the owner. Sometimes the project is so lopsided that the owner just needs to sell it and start over. Other times, all it needs is a kickstart to get it moving in the right direction again. That's where we come in. Gears on the Road is brought to you by LMC Truck. Keep them on the road. Today's On the Road took us into a small neighborhood in a small town and into a small shop garage behind a house where a young man named Kenny was deep into his first project. And it was anything but small. How did you get into the Chevy trucks? My grandfather, yeah. he was a big Chevy man, I guess. You know, yeah. and I kind of, I'm doing the 67 because he had one. I just love the yeah. uh, streamlined look, especially yeah. the 67s because they were plain, didn't have no marker lights. Yeah. It's just a nice truck. The truck started out as a fully assembled Chevy C10, but you would never know it by looking at it now. Matter of fact, you'd have to look pretty close to realize that this was a truck at all. With the truck in a million pieces, you can tell that this is a major undertaking. But believe it or not, this is Kenny's first big project vehicle. This is your main project? This is my main project okay. right here. This is it. So. Now, have you already been through the chassis? It looks clean. I already been through everything. And like he said with the 64, okay. it's a spray can. And you're keeping everything stock? Everything's Suspension? stock. Everything's stock. You know, okay. I want to look like it did in 67. That's cool. But just a little more better. Yeah. You know? so I bought it for a parts truck and uh, it was a long bed. Yeah. We thought about cutting it down and all, but figure why not find a solid short bed chassis. It'd be so much easier. Now, Kenny gets his passion for cool cars and trucks naturally, as he is also the proud owner of this classic Impala that his uncle bought new in the 60s. And of course, he and his dad have been wrenching on that as well. In 08, Mother's Day, first time I seen it out in the light, and, uh, I just knew it was something that I'd like. Yeah, and how old were you? I was nine. You were nine? I was nine years old when and he pulled And this car it out. rolled out into the light. Explain that to me. What, what did you feel? What, what did you think? Just, wow. Yeah. You know, I've never seen nothing like it. I was just so used to seeing daddy's 250 down there, or, yeah. you know, mom had a Pontiac or something. So this was different. And like I said, I'd never seen it, and I was just like, wow. Yeah. Even at nine, it was just, it was cool. Yeah. You know? And it is a true SS. Vin tag on the door, protective plate, all that, you know, true SS. And, uh, well, you know, if you ever want to get rid of this. I know who to call. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not all that's going on in this shop. There's also a couple of trucks that Kenny's dad is working on. And the father and son have a unique agreement when it comes to the projects. And that is to help each other out and keep the disagreements to a minimum. He's looking for a gauge cluster. He thinks it's over here. I know exactly where it's at. Um, you know, we're a complete opposite when it comes to organization. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome, man. Oh, the old straight six, man. That's it, 223. Man, this is in really good shape. Well. So now, is this a... a, a a project also, or is this, this is, something you're going to drive? Or? This is going to be a driver, and uh, that's why it's not perfect. And uh, Man, there's no yeah. rust in the floors? When we got it, it was, uh, I think it's from Arizona. Yeah. And uh, there's no rust, just surface rust, and uh, took it all apart, took the cab off, seat out, everything you see was frame off. Yeah. Had the seat redone, put it back together. <laughs> and, uh, Where are you going to find the time to do all these vehicles? I don't know. <laughs> you gonna let him drive the truck when it's done? Of course, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, as long as you get to drive that big block behind you? Yeah. <laughs> I hear a laugh on the other side of the Yeah, room. yeah, that's right. As yeah. long as I get to drive that. He can't dog a three-speed on a column, but yeah. I'm a dog that. Yeah. <laughs> he better believe it, you know. <laughs> but this car and truck obsession isn't just limited to the guys in this family. When we pulled the cover off this all-original 86 Monte Carlo SS, we found out that it was his mom's car from back in the day. No doubt making her one of the hottest girls at the mall. 
Another thing that became clear as we looked around the shop was where Kenny got some of his early wrenching experience and the ability to tear things apart with gusto. What was your first mechanical project? This here. A motorcycle. It was. And were you glad about that? I was so happy. What was what was cool about it? Well, just being with Dad for one. Yeah. And he just built the shop. Yeah. And that was cool in itself. No lights and nothing. So we'd come up here in the day and we'd plug lights in and we'd look at it. So I remember taking the motor out, taking it apart. I could yeah. take anything apart. Couldn't put it back together. Yeah, putting it back together might be, we need to work on that. But I've got a lot better at that, you know. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> as he laughs. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we are out on the road checking out Kenny's shop and Project C10 truck. Now, when it comes to Kenny's C10 project, it's not as chaotic as it seems. The frame and the chassis are all rebuilt and painted and put together, and the motor and the drivetrain are in place as well. And when it comes to the direction for the build, Kenny likes to keep things fairly stock. So a rebuilt small block and a stock suspension is just fine with him. No, this is an original short bed chassis. Okay. And uh, we thought about cutting one down because when I got a truck, it was a uh, bought it for a parts truck, and uh, it was a long bed. Yeah. We thought about cutting it down and all, but figure why not find a solid short bed chassis? It'd be so much easier. Yeah. You know, of course, get some tires, rims, yeah. painted and stuff, put them on there. And yeah. Transmission and motors already hooked up, so other than that, mock up the cab bed and make sure everything fits. The big challenge he's facing now, however, is the cab and all of the nasty rust and damage that has invaded the floors and the rockers. So father and son flipped it upside down in the middle of the shop and are in the process of learning the ins and outs of sheet metal replacement. And I say learning because neither have done anything like this before. So this is totally new to you. I went to school for welding, but okay. I've never done like yeah, this is a whole different type of welding. This is all type of welding. Cause we didn't have to do nothing on that truck, you know. Yeah. So now, have you ever done anything like this before? I'm a welder by trade, but nothing on a cab like yeah. this. The main thing is getting all these uh, metal pieces welded in on the cab. Yeah. Uh, once we do that and get some of the dents hammered out and put it over. After we get the cab done, it should go pretty quick. Fortunately, this is an area where we can help. So we hooked up with the guys at LMC Truck to give Kenny a $1,500 credit to be used however he wants. Now, with a quick look through several LMC catalogs, I was able to show him all the floor and cab sheet metal that's available, as well as bed parts, fenders, bumpers, etc. If you could pick anything for this truck that you really think you need, what is it? Um, so I'm probably going to buy the uh, step side fenders and a couple more pieces of metal for the cab and uh, save the rest for something that comes up or give it to dad for his truck, you know, yeah. so. The biggest challenge for the guys now will be deciding what parts they need to get for Kenny's truck and what parts that they're gonna get for his dad's trucks. But that's a good problem to have and a great way to keep the father-son projects going for a long time. So how cool is that to have your dad helping you? It's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned a lot from him. Yeah. And, uh, just by watching and hands yeah. on, you know. So. so what's it like to be out here working with your son in the garage? Well, sometimes it's got its challenges. <laughs> uh. And now it's time for another quick tip. You know, most car enthusiasts have no trouble dumping a ton of money into their project in things like custom engines or interiors or wheels and tires and all that great stuff. But when it comes time to replace old nasty hardware, things like nuts and bolts, that kind of thing, for some reason, some people get really stingy and keep reusing the old junk. Let me show you what I'm talking about. A prime example of that are these set screws that hold this big, massive brake drum in place. As you can see, these are all buggered up, probably have never been replaced since the truck was new in 68. Now, what's going to happen is eventually that flathead screwdriver is going to strip these heads out. It's almost done it already. 
and eventually you're not going to be able to get the screws out to take the hub off. So then you're going to have to drill each one out and get the threads out. Yeah, it becomes a real pain in the butt. And it is completely avoidable if you replace stuff like this once it starts to get worn. Now look at this. I do recommend getting away from this old flathead design and going with something more modern like this that takes an Allen wrench. Now the reason for that is obviously this is much stronger and much less prone to stripping out than the old flathead deal. Also, if you want to keep these threads from rusting in place, a little bit of anises on the threads will keep that from happening. Now, the reason a lot of people don't replace this stuff is that these can be kind of hard to find and they can be kind of expensive. So there's a little effort involved here. But if you take care of an issue before it becomes a problem, this will make working on your vehicle so much more fun way down the road. If you'd like to learn more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. You know, we get a lot of questions that come into the show, and we try to answer as many as these as we can. And most of the questions have to do with restoration issues or fabrication or that kind of thing. But a lot of the questions have to do with tools and how to set up a shop. So, a few years ago, we showed you how to set up a shop so you had like a work area and then a fabrication area and then an assembly area to keep you organized. But what we didn't talk about is how to set up an air system or a ventilation system or electrical. And since we're in the middle of building a new shop and dealing with that, that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, one of the most important things to have in a shop is some sort of compressed air. Because in spite of what you may think about electric tools, which are awesome, compressed air is still one of the best, strongest, most efficient ways to run hundreds of tools. And some of them take a lot of air pressure. Now, obviously, if you don't have something like this, if you're not working in a big shop, and you're just working in a small garage, tweaking on the weekends, maybe using an air tool every once in a while, you can get by with a portable air compressor. But if you're using tools like this, on projects like that, <laughs> you need to look into a full air system. Take a look. When it comes to compressed air, you've probably heard of Kaiser. Founded in 1919, their main focus has been the development of modern rotary screw compressors and offering complete air systems to everyone, whether it's a small shop or a huge industrial plant. For example, this is called the Air Center, and it was designed to solve the issues normally found with a conventional air system. Of course, the heart of the system is an industrial rotary screw compressor because it's more efficient and reliable than the traditional piston style compressor. The compressor is turned by an enclosed fan cooled electric motor with an auto tensioning belt drive so you have low maintenance. There's also an air oil separator to keep the compressed air free of oil, which is very important if you're going to be doing any painting. And you also have a refrigerated dryer that cools the compressed air down to reduce moisture because moisture is the enemy of any compressed air system. And of course you have a holding tank to store the air in. The best part is, all these components are packed into a very small package so it doesn't take up a lot of room. And it's surrounded with a heavy-duty steel casing and noise insulation, so this thing is extremely quiet. Quiet enough to keep in your shop with you. Try doing that with an old piston-driven compressor. Okay, that takes care of the air supply system. Now we're going to show you the best way to get the air to the workstations. This is what Kaiser calls Smart Pipe, and it is specifically designed for compressed air systems. It has a low friction interior, so it provides great flow, and it's made out of aluminum, so it's not going to rust or corrode. Now it's connected with these simple compression fittings, so there's no threading, welding, or brazing. You just cut it to length, install the fitting, and then mount it to the wall. It's easy enough to do yourself, or Kaiser will send out a crew to do it for you. However, the one thing that you will have to do, no matter who installs the tubing, is lay out your tubing system to make sure that you have a hose drop any place that you might need compressed air. Now, most of the time, a single air tank in the compressor room is sufficient for air storage. 
However, if you're going to be running pipe long distances around the shop, you may need to add a receiver tank to help reduce pressure fluctuations and to ensure that you have plenty of air when you need it. And of course, the final piece to any air system is a hose reel. And ideally, those should be placed throughout your workspace so that you'll be able to pull an air hose anywhere in the shop with no problem. And don't forget to put one by the door so you can run an airline outside because you always are going to need that. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we are showing you some ways to set up your shop. Now, so far, we've already shown you how to set up a compressed air system. Now we're going to talk about ventilation in the shop, because not a lot of work gets done if the shop is too hot or too cold. So obviously, having a heat and air conditioning system is important. And we've got several of these units spaced throughout the shop on the walls. But instead of using the traditional ducting to move the air around, we've got a better, more efficient way to do it. We're going to use fans. Now, when it comes to a shop fan, most people think of something that sits on the floor and blows air. And some people get really creative about how they do this. <laughs> But the problem with any fan that sits on the floor is it basically just blows dirt and hot air across the floor into your face. So we're not talking about any fan that mounts on the floor. We're talking about a ceiling fan. But not just any ceiling fan. This is the Green Heck Amplify DS6 high volume, low speed overhead fan. The first thing that grabs you about this fan is the massive aluminum blades that this thing spins. But these are not just one size fits all fans, no. The blades are available to go from eight to 24 feet in diameter, and Green Health will work with you to determine what size will work best with your shop or barn or garage. They're high volume, low speed. Yeah. But even at high speed, you do see that these things in revolutions per minute are really cooking. And the last thing you want up there is a lot of vibration. Yeah. So they are put through a wind tunnel yeah. to maximize the aerodynamic of the blade, to maximize the airflow in space. The second thing is how slowly the fan turns to be effective. Now, due to the size and the pitch of the blades, these fans could drop the temperature up to 15 degrees. And you can move up to 240 thousand CFM of air. Now when you combine that with an air conditioning system, you've got some serious cooling potential here. The way the fans work is that we're not physically changing the temperature in the space. It's perceived. So when you have your shirt, sleeves, and your arms and your head and neck are sweating and you're working on your vehicles, the speed that's created by the air crossing your skin, we're maximizing the body's natural process to cool off. So by doing so, we allow you to offset that thermostat by 15 degrees. So we actually make it feel 15 degrees cooler than what it actually is in the space just by ramping up the speed of that airflow. But you're never gonna hear it because Green Heck fans feature a super quiet operation. And if color is your thing, powder coating is available so you can color coordinate the blades to your shop. When it comes to the color options with the fan, we have our standard color package. Mm -hmm. We also have custom colors that we have readily available. Now there is an extended lead time on those because we do send them off to be custom coated. Yeah. Now we understand that there's that sect of individuals that have a custom paint color that all four cars of their garage are mm -hmm. and they want their fan to match it. Simply send us the RAL color paint code and we can match it. The best part is these fans don't use much power and they have a simple touch screen control for easy operation right at your fingertips. Regardless of the space that you have, whether it's a barn, whether it's a shop, whether it's a hundred years old or whether it just, the concrete just dried and you're bringing in your equipment, there's a fan for the space. Now, I know there's probably some of you that are looking at that fan up there, turning real slow and thinking, oh, come on, man, there's no way that's doing anything. Well, that's exactly what I thought the first time I saw one of those until I walked into a room with one in operation and I couldn't believe the airflow. And that's why we put two of them in the new gear shop. And now, 
What are you working on? Today's What Are You Working On comes from Dirk in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And he said he wanted a project to work on with his two sons. So he said he got his childhood dream muscle car, a 67 Firebird. Man, nice choice. Very cool car. He said, however, <laughs> he made the classic mistake of buying the car online without actually looking at it in person. Yeah, you got to watch out for that. He said, so for the last five years, they've been replacing sheet metal, frame rails, the subframe's been replaced. He said, matter of fact, the only original metal is the dash, the inner quarters, the door jams, and the two interior roof supports. Man, that is a lot of sheet metal replacement. Now he said, for an engine, he didn't want to go the LS route, and I got to give him credit for that. He wanted an original engine. So he said they drove to Virginia from New Jersey to pick up a 400 block, and then they drove to Maryland to pick up the heads and some other parts. So they've been all over getting the parts for this engine, but they've got it rebuilt. And he said after it was finished, he said his boys decided to add all the stickers to the air dam that we collected at the shows from parts that we purchased for the car. He says, you won't see this on any other car. And the cool thing about it, that makes it really personal. And he said, after five years of work and a ton of sweat with his sons, they took the car out to the first Cars and Coffee this summer. Take a look at this. Guys, great project. So cool to see fathers and sons working together. So to recognize such a cool project, we're gonna hook you up with one of our deluxe project planning books so you can keep track of everything that you have done on that project. Also, we're gonna hook you up with some Gears t-shirts so you can wear those proudly. And we're gonna give you a gift card from Holly because I know there's some Holly products that's gonna work on that Firebird. And then we're gonna give you a, a Sergeant Rock die cast. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you wanna get in on this, get your project featured on the show, man, you gotta send it to us. Go to our website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into What Are You Working On? The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation. Now, being a Gears Nation member gives you access to our new app through Android and iOS, where you can watch all of our Gears content commercial free. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime for Gears and the Restoration Series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes footage on our weekly web series, Shifting Gears. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our new podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, that wraps it up for us today. Obviously, we have a shop to finish. Dirk has a Firebird to go out and enjoy with his sons. And you, you need to get out there and work on something. Car, truck, motorcycle, even just taking some parts and making a little tank out of it. Just something. Get out there and work on it. We'll see you next time.